Hey, welcome to the North Georgia Mountains. Today, would love to have a discussion with you about collecting wild water and the treatment thereof. And this discussion is not meant to be a how-to as much as me sharing information with you on what I do. And the reason for that is I'm no expert and what I do, I don't have a tremendous amount of science behind. And then there's a lot of information out there in regarding where to collect your water and how to treat it. And a lot of that information is contradicting me. So what I'd like to do with you today is share with you what I do. So why treat the wild water? Well, one of the reasons I treat it is I don't have a good gut to process that wild water with good bacteria because I eat way too many simple carbs and sugars. Uh, the other reason is there is a lot of variables out there. There is protozoa like Giardia and Cryptosporidium. There's bacteria like E. coli and Salmonella. There are viruses and there's parasites, you know, worms, groundworms, tapeworms. And in addition to all that, there's also the opportunity for um, man-made or chemical man-made to get into those water sources too. So in regards to picking your source, we'll discuss that first and then go over water treatment. One of the things that I do before uh, coming to an area, if I have an opportunity, is check out a topo map, especially if there's some elevation, as well as look at a satellite photo, Google Earth, Google Maps, um, and I will check that area out. So as an example, the place that I am right now, high elevation, there's a mountain right here, in fact I walked around it, uh, it's a mile and a half to a forest service road that way, again on the other side of the mountain. There's a shelf here and a mountain behind it, and then there's a Forest Service road a mile to a mile and a half that way, and then it's about two miles up this watershed, and there's a pass, and the elevation is, of the pass is higher than the Forest Service road on the other side. So I feel really good about this water source, uh, and I've looked at the satellite photos, there's no man-made uh, structures, so I feel pretty good about that. Um, but that makes me feel good about the man-made stuff. Still a lot of val uh, variables in terms of the biological pathogens. So I always treat my water. Now in regards to the water sources and the things you want to look for, uh, obviously grazing animals, you want to avoid human activity. Um, if it looks like a water trough, even for uh, native wildlife, that, that might be some concern. You want to make sure the water looks healthy. Uh, are there any fish? aquatic plants, not algae blooms, you want to avoid algae blooms, but are there fish, aquatic plants, crayfish, you know, water bugs, etc. You want to make sure that that water source uh, looks healthy. Also, a lot of questions around a fast moving water source versus a still water source. So, a lot of people say go with the fast water, fast moving water source, and the reason behind that, I believe, is uh, it's very difficult for the aforementioned biological pathogens to attach to organic matter, giving you less opportunity to digest those. I haven't seen any science behind that. If it exists, I'd love to hear it. Um, but what I do believe is elevation plays a major factor in that. Obviously, the higher the elevation, chances are the cleaner the, the water source. And those higher elevations equal faster moving water sources. There are some folks out there and a little bit of science behind going with still water, assuming that still water meets the aforementioned criteria in terms of looking healthy and that water is clear and it's getting UV radiation from the sun. Uh, the belief behind that is that UV radiation will kill some of those pathogens as well as being in a still water source, hard shelled Giardia and Cryptosporidium cysts will sink. So there is some belief that a still water source can be a good water source or even better as well. Um, if you have to make a choice between a fast moving water source and a still water source, which I've had to make those choices, uh, use the aforementioned in terms of deciding which one looks better and let your intuition play into that as well. So, in regards to uh, water sources, this is pretty much it for me in North Georgia, primarily creeks. I understand in the flatlands, um, there's a lot of still water sources. 
and those can be turbid. In addition, fast-moving water sources can be turbid as well. Um, timing can play a factor in that. As an example, I know it's going to rain here shortly, and uh, I just chugged my water. And the reason being is I'm going to collect some clean water before that rain hits because a lot of those pathogens will wash down into this water source as well as create turbidity, and I want to avoid that. If I do get caught in a situation where my water is turbid, um, whether again a still water source or a fast moving, one of the things you can do is dig an Indian well or a gypsy well, and that simply is digging a hole adjacent to the water source where that hole will go below the water table of that water source, and the soil typically will filter out uh, a lot of those pathogens um, or organic material, I should say, as well as the, some of the turbidity. One of the things you do when you dig an Indian well, though, is you'll have to get that hole dig. The sides will have to be somewhat stable, and then you can use your water container to clear out some of that turbid water and let the rest settle. One of the reasons I carry a plastic bag with me is sometimes there's air, an Indian well is difficult to dig and you can't get it down deep enough for your water container, especially if you like using one liter bottles like me. Um, so I carry a plastic bag and that can help exchange that water and then collect my water and pour it into my water bottle. So that's one of the things that you can do. In regards to water treatment, um, I do not use a water filter, but even if I did, I would be capable of boiling my water as well as using chemical because water filters um, have moving parts and moving parts can break or wear out. So I definitely go with um, a chemical treatment and I'm on the move quite a bit so I don't like carrying a whole lot. I like um, using one of two depending on the situation. For day trips, I use the MicroCure taps. I can tape them to the side of my water bottle if I'm using a plastic water bottle or I'll tape them on the lid if I'm using a stainless steel bottle. Very convenient. One tablet does um, a quart or a liter. And um, again, very convenient. In addition, it takes care of cryptosporidium too if you wait long enough. Uh, the other thing I do on extended trips is I'll use 2% tincture of iodine, five drops per quart, and that works. Uh, serves a dual purpose. Again, if I'm on longer trips and I'm carrying more, I'm more than happy to carry that 2% tincture of iodine because it'll treat my water as well as be a disinfectant for my wounds. The other thing I'll do is boil water and. Again, more contradiction in terms of how long do you boil that water. Uh, I just let it come to a boil. I don't care what the altitude is. Um, so uh, I believe that most pathogens are killed at 185 degrees. You know, a lot of people say let it boil for a long time. As far as I'm concerned, that water boiling is just letting me know that I've reached 212 and that's good enough. So those are the three, three things that I do in terms of treatment. I use microcure tabs, 2% tincture of iodine, or I boil my water. So how do you go about collecting water and treating it? Um, I'm at a fast moving water source. You can obviously see the, the waterfall. I do not stick my water bottle underneath it. I get too many floaties that way. I'll find a still section of the creek and I'll stick my water bottle all the way under the water. Let it fill up. I'll check it for floaties organic matter, which I'll live with a little bit. I don't want any water bugs in there. And at this point, I'll do my chemical treatment. I'll either drop in the MicroPure tab or the... I either drop in the MicroPure tab or um, the five drops of iodine. Either one, I'll wait 30 minutes. I don't care what the EPA says about the MicroPure tabs. And four hours, I'll wait 30 minutes. After that 30 minutes is up, I still have to worry about contaminated or untreated water uh, along the threads of the lid as well as the water bottle and the lip. So to clean that with the treated water, turn it upside down, loosen the cap, let it purge some of that water out. I love getting the treated water on my hand when I'm in a wilderness situation. The reason being is hygiene and we'll talk a little bit more about that. At this point, I feel pretty good about drinking this water with the chemical treatment in it after my 30 minute wait. And I don't do flavored watering, uh, flavored water. If you do, make sure you wait till everything is done that 30 minute period and you clean the, the threads because that flavoring could neutralize some of the chemicals in the treatment. So definitely wait. 
I don't use it because I don't want the scent in my water bottle. Um, when I sleep, when I'm camping, I keep my water bottle close by and I do it in bear country, so I avoid the, the flavored water. But that's, that's it in terms of water sources and treatments for me. Um, we'll end it on uh, hygiene. All this stuff that I've done could be for not if I don't practice good hygiene. I mean, my goodness, when you're at home or out in public, you wash your hands before you eat. Why wouldn't you practice good hygiene when you're out here of all the places? Because you're away from, from treatment. So chances are if you get sick in the wilderness, even if you treated your water, even if you didn't, chances are the reason you're going to get sick is that classic hand to mouth. And that's what's going to make you sick. And there is some science behind that. So definitely treat your water, too many variables, and practice good hygiene. And you'll have a much healthier experience when you're in the wilderness, especially on an extended stay. Hope this was helpful. Again, not a how-to. This is what I do. Take something away from it. If you got any science behind anything that uh, I've discussed, would love to hear it. Thanks. Take care.